I am unashamed. What about you? No, I asked you a question. I was saying that I think it's significant that we're in Colossians 2, verse 12, and the whole thing's talked about Christ, and then he, he brings up, not me, he brought it up saying, Christ cut off your sinful self when? Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith. So my point was baptism was not in the old law. But most people today, when they bring up it's baptism. It's how you get out from under it. It's you're, when. You're, Phil, you're not even nowhere near your mic. It's, uh, it's when you get out from Well, under. yeah, but I, it's still Jesus. If, if you miss Jesus, you missed it. If you hadn't learned anything from Colossians. And it's not based on you or human traditions or human commands or human regulations or human rituals. But then it's like when you get to baptism, people say, well, Jesus commanded it, so we ought to do it. Now, I'm not saying that diminishes it. I'm just saying that 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 bothers me a little bit. I, I think it should be something you're doesn't, excited about. You know, It doesn't seem to honor... Yeah. The the importance of it is what you're saying. Right, because I right? think it's yeah. where you're giving up. So to simply say, well, we ought to do it because I said so. I mean, I had the same frustration as a kid when my parents, which this is awkward since you're sitting here, but whenever. <laughs> <laughs> whenever what we're doing here today is a conference. I think he's talking to you, Dad. Yeah. Whenever y'all didn't have a reasonable explanation for why I should do something, when you gave the old answer because I said so, I'm like, well, wait a minute now. All people are flawed. We all make mistakes. <laughs> what if you're wrong? And now, now I get it with God. He, you could make the point. He said to do it, so we do it, and we trust him. But understanding why, to me, is important. And well, I, yeah, think, it's, it's, I, I think it, Colossians it's, 2 gives a great explanation of why we do that, and but people don't want to talk about it. That's all I said. I think we should talk about it. Well, along with Romans 6, I think that what, the way we grew up in our faith tradition was, uh, I would say, an unhealthy obsession with baptism to, to the point where baptism it replaced the gospel. And so when we would talk about sharing the gospel with people, what, what, what we really meant was let's go to scripture and, and show them why they have to be baptized to be saved. Yeah. And, and whether they heard the gospel or not. And when I, well, it was, a, it was a five, Zach, it was a five point, you know, it was hear, believe. Well, repent, that confess. is true. Yeah. I'm not, and that, that yeah. replaced Jesus in with the way we grew well, up. And that's, but that's, I think that's not good. The amount of people have done that is a small group considering the entire religious world. I mean, based on my experiences with well, that's being, true. Yeah, it's a small. But I would and I would say in other groups, what I, I've heard, um, you know, the big discussion is 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 uh, is baptism a means of grace? Uh, is it a sacrament or is it an ordinance? Uh, ordinance would be, you know, we do this to join the church. We do this as a public, public proclamation. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's both. I think that baptism is probably both of those things. But and, and, and but I think the bigger issue, the bigger point of baptism is what what does baptism symbolize i i I interpret baptism very similar how i would interpret the eucharist or the lord's supper or the communion or whatever your your term for that is um that these are these are symbols of of the real thing you know the the elements that we take on sunday morning unless you're catholic and you believe in transubstantiation which i don't believe that I believe that these are elements that, that are not the real thing. And the fact that our church, when we offer communion every Sunday, we put a fence around it and are basically like, you know, if you're not a believer, don't participate in this. You can actually have the real thing. And I think what baptism is in a similar way is baptism is a it's 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 a symbol of our own connection with the gospel of Jesus. It's it's you know, we're dying with what's it say here in him. Yeah, let's read it. Why don't we just read the read the paragraph when he says, uh, I mean, he, what leads into this is that he says, don't be taken captive by this deceptive philosophy that depends on human tradition, basic principles of the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form 
and you have been given fullness in Christ, which is, which is enough, who is the head over every power and authority. In Christ, you were circumcised. Now, that, this is where this goes off the rails, because you're like, do what? In the putting off of the sinful nature or the flesh. Not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And I read on the last podcast, I guess, let me go ahead and read the rest of it. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature or the flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross, having disarmed the powers, authorities, and made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. Discuss. (laughs) <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, first of all, it, this language is almost completely mirrored in Romans six yep. when he talks about, you know, could be connected with Christ through baptism. I, I would, I would argue that the water baptism is a symbol of, of baptism in a broader sense of being immersed with Christ. And so we're, we're reenacting, you know, the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. When, when we baptize folks, we always say that, the water, what do we say? It symbolizes a grave and, and the, the person is going down into the water and they're, they're you know, dying with Christ in baptism to mirror this language in Romans 6. So when they're under the water, you know, they're dying. That's why, Bill, you talked about a funeral progression because they're going, that's what they're, that's what it is, right? You're going down to the water. The old man's dying and, yeah. and he's connected with Christ in his death. He's connected with Christ in his burial. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, he too may be raised to live a new life. So I, so I think that that's the bigger issue and, and, and point of baptism. I don't think baptism is simply a means to join the church and make a public, a public proclamation of your faith. I actually believe. Well, there's a lot of people who believe that. Yeah. And, and it, and it, and it, to your point, Jay's it cheapens it to, if you only yeah, view I, it from it, that it, I mean, look, I don't judge people who, no. say things differently about it, but it seems like it, there's a lot of religious people who just have to make a point to somehow diminish it. And, and what I mean is like when people say, well, let's do a baptism Sunday once a month. I'm like, what? I mean, that I, I don't like that. I think when people hear about Jesus and they want to be baptized, you should stop the chariot to to, <laughs> <laughs> to give the analogy of here, here the is open. water. Why, well, I, why would not get I, in I, it? I don't, right? what, what are we waiting around for? You're like, now look, I, I will try to not talk people out of it, but like say, are you sure? You know, I mean, I, the, you can count the cost. You can have conversations, but I'm usually saying, look, this is not about you. In this context, is what's so bizarre to me is that every reason that people give that I've heard about why you should just do it once a month or it is an entryway into the church or it's a, what do they say? It's an outward expression of an inward of grace. An outward it, response of an inward, outward expression of an inward response. But look, when I heard that, when I was, when I was, I guess in my mind debating on whether I was going to be a Christian. I mean, I'm saying that from a wrong point of view. I did get the point that, Oh, wait a minute. Jesus is awesome. And God is pursuing me. I need to give up and surrender. But when I, when I was debating that, when they said that, when I heard that phrase, I thought, what does that mean? I mean, it was so, it was like, it was a cleverly, it's a cleverly woven statement but it's somehow trying to make people feel better about doing it because you're actually, they're like, well, it's a physical act. But Jesus, I mean, the Holy Spirit here through Paul actually mirrored baptism over another physical act, which was circumcision, which, which was a prerequisite to be 
part of the what? How do you well, it depict was, that? It was Judaism. A sign, it was a sign. Yeah, it was a it, sign that you were part of God's covenant people. But don't you and, think and, it's and, ironic that he chose another thing that he wrote a whole letter about, saying if you go that route, you you'll be eternally condemned to the book of Galatians. It's I mean, not the gospel plus, yeah. But so don't you question, think it's ironic the, the, that he used that to mirror baptism in a positive I, way? I think I think sometimes here's where we fail on explaining it. And you have one story in the Old Testament. Way back, we got a guy and he has a problem. It's n It doesn't say a word about sin. Nope. It just says he has a disease. Oh, you're talking about Naaman? Naaman. Naaman, so, Naaman was five. commander of the army of the king of Aragon, Aram, and he, he was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. So he's a good guy. Through him, the Lord had given victory to Ar Aram. He was a valiant soldier. Now, he's singing his praises, but the guy has a problem. This is way before God became flesh. This is way back. So he has a problem, but he had leprosy. He is told if he can get hooked up with the right people, the people of God, and let these prophets tell him what he needs to do, uh, he'll be okay. So he goes down there in front of Elisha's house, the prophet, and he sent a messenger to say to him, Elisha didn't do it. He just sent somebody down. He said, hey, what's his problem? He said, well, he's got leprosy, and, he, and uh, some girl that works for somebody sent her down there, and, and they think somehow that God can cure him of his leprosy, but he's, he's got to do something. He said, what is it? So Elisha sent a messenger to him. He didn't go. He just sent a man out there. He said, go down there and tell him and watch. Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan. That's a river. There's water. It flows. Jordan River. There's nothing, nothing sanctimonious about it. It's just a stream flowing by in the middle of nowhere. And your flesh will be restored if you'll go wash yourself seven times. Not six, not five, seven. You'll be restored and you'll be cleansed. All right. We have a simple way out of this. I'm speaking on behalf of God and Elisha, I mean, uh, 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 Naaman, you got a problem. Here's how you fix it. Go down there and dip seven times in the Jordan River. You'll be all right. Well, here's this guy's response. You know, if I, somebody told me that, I'm like, do what? Go down there to the Jordan River and dip seven but times. But I think people think. I've got this that, leprosy. I'm looking it, on my body. They think you're saying that you're saving yourself, which he did in the in Peter in, in the first sermon. It's all about is Naaman who has the leprosy, the solution is said to be by God, Elisha the prophet. He needs, if he wants to be healed, carry out instructions. But God healed him. First, he said, carry out the instructions because yeah. he's mad. I mean, I think it's a good, it's a good point, but I'm yeah. saying they're going to say, I'm not sure what they'll say to that. Yeah. Naaman, here's what Naaman thought. He thought it was going to be like the world looks at it all these years later. I thought that he, he, God, or the prophet, would surely come out to me. I mean, where, where's the prophet? He said, oh, he just told me to tell you what to do. Dip seven times in the Jordan, you'll be all right. He said, yeah. But I thought he would at least come and call on the name of the Lord and wave his hand over. I thought we were going to do this. I mean, I got a bad disease here. I thought he would just do something himself, but, but where is the man of God? Said, well, he just sent me to tell you what to do. Go down there and dip seven times. You'll be all right. So he argued. But see, my point is, I think he wasn't carrying out his instructions as much as saying, man, I got an opportunity to get rid of this disease. Well, it's, it's you see what I mean? It's like, yeah, but I, I, what I I'm saying is, you got to be careful, though. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's take a break. So, uh, Dad, you know, we never, when I was growing up, I don't remember you ever having a lot of conversations with me about underwear. You just kind of wore whatever we had. But now as we've gotten older, uh, we have grown to appreciate that not all underwear is created equally. Would you agree with that statement? I'll agree with that. I put on these, 
these underwear y'all are talking about, and I thought, well, the first thing Miss K said is, wow. I thought, boy, we're getting somewhere <laughs> with these underwear. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wow from Miss K. That's pretty good. Zach, you may you have betcha. to try some of these, too. So oh, I've, got, uh, I've got several pair. They're about, okay, there they're you about go. as comfortable as you can get. They're they, they are the best. They're cooler. Uh, we're talking about Tommy John's, of course, and uh, uh, Zach and I were wearing these even before they became uh, sponsors of the podcast, but now we got Jay's and Dad wearing them as well. Yep. Uh, they have a best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee, which I like that. Um, but you're going to love them. Trust me. So here's what you do. You go to tommyjohn.com slash Phil right now, and you're going to get 20% off your first order. That's 20% off right now at tommyjohn.com slash Phil. That's tommyjohn.com slash Phil. See their site for details. Tommy John's get a little wow in your life. Well, his team says, Look, uh, uh, could not uh, look. Are not Obama and Far Far the the two other rivers, the rivers in Damascus? We got to cross two rivers to get to one he's talking about. I mean, why that? Why aren't they better water uh, of Israel? These two here, these other rivers. Well, let's just go over to the Jordan. Well, that's I don't a get valid it. point. He was interjecting. I mean, it's like if it were me, I would do it this way. Yeah, I try. yeah you would but do, that's yeah, my but whole you, point you, for this conversation. I'm just saying, the all argument, these religious yeah, people just, can't hold on, hold can't on, come to an agreement. So we well, got. Think you got so let me finish my let me finish my little lesson here. Naaman's servants <laughs> went to him. They said, "Father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? I mean, how much more when he tells you just wash and be cleansed? I mean, why don't you just do it?" I mean, he said it'll work. And and he's looking, he's like, all right, I guess I will. Well, he goes down there and carries out instructions, and he comes up, and he said, good night. God was right all along. He did take his stuff away from me. Now, look, so the question comes up. Would he have cleansed him if he hadn't carried out instructions? I don't when know. We're, we're said, going down a pretty when, far rabbit when hole. When Jesus said, no, nah, when he said, <laughs> All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. This is post-resurrection. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, and you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll be with you to the end of the age. I mean, how, how simple could it be? He's not asking for people to do a great thing here. Just go down there. You're going to get wet. You're going to get muddy. But he said, go baptize them. I just but read can, that. But said, you can get. I, I said, I think I got it. So I just tell people, Jesus said, you need to be baptized, become a disciple of his, if you have the faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. Do you believe that? Yeah. Well, you're going to confess with your mouth on this before we do it, that Jesus will be the Lord of your life. You got that? You need to carry out instruction. Okay. Well, let's go. And they baptized. We baptized him. I did it. I did it yesterday because God said to him, Jesus told me to. Tell them they need to be baptized and tell them why. Then you get to Colossians, and it becomes very clear, the cleansing, the, the circumcision of the sinful nature. Whoa, you got Romans 6 as a good night. I'm dying to sin here. I'm being born again, and this is when, when it happens. I just don't think it's that, it's that I just think it's elementary teaching and as easy as anything. So John the Baptist shows up, and he baptizes them by the thousands, but preparing first, them it, for it's, this. It's not e I mean, what I'm saying is it's probably the most debated thing in the Bible. For no good reason. Well, I, well, <laughs> you, if, you take Paul's, if you take Paul's um, connection to circumcision, for example, in Colossians 2, which I think is, a, is brilliantly done by Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and then you ask the question— if it's the new circumcision and, and, and it's a prototype of circumcision was a prototype of baptism, I would go to Romans four and ask the question about Abraham. When, when was Abraham justified? Because, because Paul asked that questions in he asked that question in Romans four and he says, was he justified before he was circumcised or was he justified after he was circumcised? And Paul makes it very clear that, that, that um, Abraham was justified before he was circumcised, and he was justified by his by his faith. 
And um, I think that the, the problem we've had with baptism is we've turned it, particularly in the do- denomination I grew up in, which was called a non-denomination, but really was a denomination, but they, they turned baptism into a work. And yeah. so it, it, it became something that you, you, you did just because God said to do it. But, and, and that is a reason to do it, but it's not the only thing that's going on there. And I think that that's why these passages like in Romans 6 and Colossians 2 are so important. But they have to jive with Romans four too, and uh, four also um, that 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 gives us that. We, I mean, we can't turn it into a work. We can't say that. I mean, uh, uh, for what Peter says it very clear that it's not the water. It's not the removal of dirt from the flesh. Well, it let's read the, that. Or so yeah. that first or second. First Peter, Peter three, 3 fifteen, first. and I'm glad you brought this up because look, I do think that. There's that that is a discussion that needs to be addressed when people turn it into a work. Well, no, that's not right. But when you think about what you're actually Zach, I, I, doing, I literally had my Bible turned to Romans four, by the way. Just to, well, I had mine turned to first Peter three fifteen, So that's weird. <laughs> but you think about it. So if you were going to do a work, even though I'm going back to that acts too, when Peter, he, what do he do in the first sermon? He's got the keys to the kingdom. And he unleashes and introduces Jesus in a new and profound way that he's the son of God. He died. He was buried. He was raised. All the people heard it. They were cut to the heart. They said, what do we do? And he tells them, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. You'll get the Holy Spirit, forgiveness of sins. And then he says, save yourselves from this corrupt, with many other words, he, he warned, warned them, them and, and plead with them. Save yourselves from this corrupt ge- generation. Well, somebody said, well, "Well, save yourself. You can't save yourself. Jesus saves you." But that's what he just said. You you surrender to the one who can save you. So when the whole argument about people turning baptism in a work into a work, it's actually where you're relinquishing your ability to work. It's the opposite. You are. I correct. think it's the greatest idea that God came up with outside of sending Jesus down to die, be buried and raised. Cause then he's like, okay, let me get this right. I'm calling you to this and you'll say, well, yeah, I can't do anything to save myself. Exactly. So surrender, relinquish your ability to work out your own salvation. So that's why then all these verses that, that uh, Jesus said in the gospels, they then make sense. If you want to live, what do you got to do? Gotta you got to die. And be You're like, wait, what? So no wonder people can't understand this. They're like, you want to follow me? Better bring your cross. Yep. Oh, but to, I see. What You may read this first, it, first Peter. I think, before you read that, think about the idea of the symbol of baptism was introduced first by John the Baptist yep. as a sign of repentance that Jesus had come and so all these people are getting baptized, but we know from Acts, what is it, Acts 19, that the Holy Spirit wasn't given in John's baptism. Well, I think that was the that shadow. That didn't happen until later, right? That was the sh- Everything in the Bible has the shadow, but the reality is found in Christ. That's where we're at. Where's that, Colossians? Yeah. The reality is found in, in Christ. But the, the baptism, I think, to, to your point, Zach, the reason it's not a work is because it was not in the old law. It's well, not. It was not a command. Well, but you, but, in, but something the, can something can be a work and not have been in the old law. I think that. Um, but I it mean, is Baptist, interesting that it was not a rule. Very much. So. That it, it was introduced by John the Bab, you know, the baptizer, which is my point. Was the shadow? You're going to make a commitment here. The circ- that you're going to circ- change. The circumcision was in the old law. And well, so he it, made the illustration to go. Actually, it pre, actually it predated the old law to go circumcision Abraham. with baptism, which I do agree. But to me, the point is, it was it's an opportunity. That's all I was trying to say is God gave you an opportunity to die and to give up in Jesus, and I think I, I it love, causes love, excitement. It does. I think and that, well, that's you read the in the thing, book of Acts, they were baptizing people on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at night, in the morning, in creeks, and ponds, in rivers. 
it just doesn't feel like what we it did is it yesterday. To, like it is, well, is today, though. I mean, I'm saying a lot of pe- a lot of churches. It's like a once a month time. It's usually some kids. It, it, I, yeah, I, I, I feel I like something can, happened here. Yeah, I think that the but you can. I think there's like it's not either or. I think there's a, a another. I hate to say this, a third way option, third wayism, but uh, but it's um. I, th- I think that I don't understand how someone. This is me. I'm not not don't want to offend anybody, but I don't understand how like someone would ha- have a hermit a hermeneutic that would lead them to believe baptismal regeneration, but would not lead them, which is basically that that baptism saves you. The yeah, water. that's the moment of salvation. You're using but a lot of would, words. A big word. Hermeneutic would be <laughs> okay, how like you study the Bible. What was the other phrase you used? Baptism, regeneration. Water regeneration. I'm not yeah. even sure yeah. what that means. Tell us like what the, that the, means. This is the point hang, of your salvation. On, Let's take a break. But, you know, baptismal regeneration, that would be the point of your salvation. But if, 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 that's the, if that's how you interpret the Scripture, then you're, then you're basically putting this, I think, unnecessary emphasis on the physical component of baptism which if you're going to do that, I think you would also then have to say that when you take the communion, that you are literally taking the literal flesh and blood of Christ because Jesus said that this is my body and this is my blood. That's a good the, the point. Reason, so, I, so my point is that there's a reason why he did Protestants— say, He did say my, my blood is real and my, my body is real. You know, Jesus said, my flesh, eating my flesh, it's real. To us, it is real. But we're doing it by faith. But you got to remember, just keep thinking about Naaman. But I, Wash and be <laughs> cleansed. It's a good illustration, but I don't think he was thinking about this as a reason you're baptized. I mean, I do think it's a similar illustration, but. Yeah, I think because if you if you take that analogy, which I heard that when I took uh, uh, the survey of Romans, uh, one of my professors in college, Jimmy Allen, which I loved the class, and he was obviously in the Churches of Christ, was kind of an iconic figure. Um, but he he used that same argument, and I think the only problem I would have with it is that um, I think it reduces baptism to simply something you just do because God said it. That's, that's I think what I've felt too, Zach. Uh, same it, thing. It's, it's, it, it, it's more than that, and I think that's the problem when we when we have the discussion of when are you saved before or after your bad all that the whole the whole thing. I mean, like I, mean, I, I definitely think you're saved when you put your faith in Jesus. I'll just say but, that right but now. But to like, me, it would line. be it would be like me going through the marriage ceremony because I have to do it. You know, it's just just what we got to do. I mean, look, I know a, I know a few husbands out there who's said that but i'm like that's not why you do it you better not say it out loud (laughs) you meet this woman you know i met my wife and as this evolved and and i look i mean i you know i was i was what is the word i was enamored i was inspired i was driven i was passionate and i mean the ceremony was the opportunity to make this official i mean i didn't like well i guess i have to do it why? Because our society says you got to walk down there. I, you know, maybe this is it. a terrible, gotta do it. terrible illustration. But to me, you you miss out on the joy and power of it, of of looking at it as something you have have to do in order that. You know, I mean, in contrast to this is opportunity. Now, well, you re- said something. Oh no, you said something earlier. I want to I want to tie back to. I don't know if you said it last podcast or this one. You said that we're not just saved from something, but we're saved to something yeah, or, or, or something like that. And, well, and, and I was I think, thinking the old self and the new self. Well, I think the, I think the, the bigger picture here is that baptism is even, look, you read the language of Romans six. If you read the language of Romans six, it does not seem like just a one time thing that happens and then up. Oh, okay. We're good to go. What it seems like is it says that the, the connection with the gospel, it says that uh, we are united with his death and his burial, which is obviously one time. Then we're raised with Christ, but then there's this other word, so that we may live a new life. And the and the last part of Romans chapter 6 is about our sanctification. 
It's about the progressive walk with God that goes on and on and on. So we're saved from sin, but baptism is like our first entrance. It's kind of like the symbol of our first like entrance in to becoming an apprentice of Jesus or becoming a disciple of Christ. Bill mentioned the Great Commission earlier when Jesus said, all authority on heaven and earth is given to me. And what does he say? He says, the first thing he says is not go baptize them. What does he say? Go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The emphasis that Jesus put forth in the Great Commission was to go make disciples. He wants to make followers, apprentices, people that will be transformed by the power of the gospel. And I think baptism is the is, is like this entrance. It's, it's this some. You know, water baptism is a symbolic entrance, but baptism in general sense is an entrance into becoming like Jesus. I agree. I mean, but to me, that's why I go back to the same illustration, if it's a spiritual thing. So you're in a physical war, and you run out of bullets, or you're overtaken. You know, if you surrender in that condition, well, you're not that that's not noble you're you're surrendering because they're fixed to kill you you're you've been beaten you're you're out of bullets so there's nothing magical about that what i'm saying is you're out there trying to fight in this battle and then you're introduced to a commanding officer who is who number one has created you. He, cre- he, I mean, he's, he's beyond what any kind of physical war you could even be in. And he's also imperishable. He's, he's unkillable. Well, all of a sudden I'm like, well, forget this war. I'm going with him. I, I'm, I'm, if you had a commanding officer or a, a person who loves me, who made, who made me, who loves me and, and you can't die. So then out there in this, Wherever I'm at, I decide, you know what? I got bullets here, earthly bullets. I got things I could do. But based on what I've heard and my understanding, I I am surrendering right here on this physical earthly battlefield. And I'm putting my faith and trust in some. It's a it's not I'm not in that moment saying, well, do I have to? Because if I had to, you'd have me down on the ground defeated. But I'm choosing to defeat myself because I have met someone more superior. I mean, that that's what the difference. You know, do you follow my point? No. You don't get it? No, I don't get it. <laughs> so I'm, uh, look, look. I love what that. What shall we say? What I'm saying is you're saying I we, have to. We got to. Romans 6 again. Is there a point in time when a person's sins are removed? Is there a point in time when... But I mean, his faith in Jesus. Yes, there is. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase by no means? We died to sin. Now, whenever that is, that's a critical moment in a human being's life. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And then he says this, and I'll say to y'all, don't you know? that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, in him is no sin, see, were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism. How in the world could you ever look at baptism and say, well, it's optional. I, I don't know. I don't think you have because to Because people take it and they, they make it bigger than Jesus. I don't think you can't do that. Look, if you it's don't, not, but if you're on, not introduced not to Jesus. When not, did the leprosy leave old Naaman? He said when he carried out instructions. Yeah, but Go the, to but the Jordan the, River. He didn't say, he said, what if he had just said, I think five are I know, but I just think you've, you're creating a situation well, without I would argue, Jesus being inserted into it. I, I'm saying oh, if, if you don't hear Jesus... That that's the motivation for doing this, not not. I would argue because you need to carry out his instruction. I'm saying he chose to share Jesus and reveal himself, and that is the motivating factor for wanting to surrender to him. Is what Hang I'm on, saying. Zach. Zach, let's take a break. All right, go. 
Yeah, I would argue that when the in Romans six, when he talks about baptism, he he's not speaking of water baptism. He's speaking of immersion into Christ in a, in a metaphorical sense. That it's a that he's being immersed. That we're immersed into Christ. I actually believe that water baptism is like you can't say it's not optional. I mean, I don't think any any believer could say ah, I'm just not going to do that. I I think that it, you have to be water baptized if you are a, a, a believer in Christ. I believe in a believer's baptism, meaning that I believe that too because it's mentioned about almost 100 times in the Bible, starting with John the Baptist. Before Jesus came, no one had ever heard of water baptism. When he got here, the one who's going to pave the way for the Savior of the world, you say, he's going to do it by saying, they nicknamed him, he's, he's the Baptist. Well, that's enough for me to say, don't mess with that. Just do it. Just do it. I think you, yeah, I think the point though is he just. I just think you you have to. We don't ever want to add to to faith. We don't want to say that you have to put your faith in Jesus plus anything else. I mean, it's I mean, because I, primarily because of the work in Romans, and I, so when I read Romans six, I'm also going back and thinking of it in light of Romans four, and and I, I think it's more of a Paul's argument in Romans is is like an entire argument. That that read in you know in the whole uh, the whole sixteen chapters of Romans. Um, can I read? The can first. I read this first period of three? Yeah, uh, you've been it's been on hold for twelve minutes. So I'm going to read fifteen first because he says, "In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord." That was my point. Is if you don't do that, nothing that happens after is going to mean a hill of beans, right? I mean, that's the whole point here. Jesus, Jesus is salvation. The Colossians gave you twelve reasons. Yeah. By the way, he's fixing to tell you what water is. I've studied. I know. We I studied it. with the guy. He said, hey, "You know, not, no, no water. Baptism, not water. No water. No water needed." So, well, but so so it's now you're like there. What Zach said when he just said he said the same thing because it is an immersion into Christ, but it's a surrendering of your work system you realize you cannot save yourself. And when is that? Well, it's a process. Because if you don't acknowledge Jesus, if you don't hear the call, you're never going to get that far. So here you are lost. When? I don't think it's saved? important to, to separate it all out because it's like when you try to go back and remember, like when I was 14, I was baptized. If you try to go back and get into my memory bank on what was going on back then, I'm never going to be able to tell you because uh, I, I can't remember. But but I, as I've studied, well, I remember it. You, and you, you, you did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's when your sins were forgiven. That wasn't my point. My point was <laughs> dad was there. He remembers. I had some guy tell me, uh, you think there's water involved in this. I yeah. said, I was under that illusion. John the Baptist, you all know, right. Naaman and all of them. Well, let me just read well, it. Go I, ahead. I was going to make a point. But that's all right. <laughs> so in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. So he gets down to verse 18 of 1 Peter 3. He says, for Christ died for sins once for all well that that's how you're saved jesus on a cross died for my sins that's that that's so i'm setting him apart as lord because he's the son of god so right? when is that well he I, he didn't say that we're getting there i know the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to god so christ actually Brought me to God through a cross yep. in an in empty tomb. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, which is just exactly what I just said. Yep. So he, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah. Now, I'm not real sure why that came up in the middle of this conversation. Well, we can talk about that later. Let you know that water's involved. Well, I know, but I'm saying him preaching to the spirits during his, when he was resurrected by the spirit. They're and dead. He, go, he went back they're, to the days they're of They're dead dawn. now. Right. While the ark was being built, in it only a few people, and we all remember the story of the ark, eight and all were saved 
through water. Uh oh. Which is an interesting statement. I've always took taken that to mean the water actually pushed the boat above it. Because I don't, you know, I don't know how it says they was saved through water. I mean, God saved them, but He told them to build a boat, and they did. Then it says it, they were saved through water. So I just through the, through the storm. They were saved through the storm, through the flood. Well, the flood that destroyed all everybody else actually pushed the boat upward. Yeah, but couldn't you? Wouldn't you argue that their the faith boat, saved them because they built the boat? Ow, yes. Because God told them to. But yeah, but what does it mean? Save through water. How did the water right. save the people? Because only a, they, a few people a you know, were saved through water. They, they had, had a boat. They had because God told them to build Nobody a boat. Nobody else was on board, and the water pushed the boat <laughs> up. That were correct. Right, let's, so, hang it, on. Let's it, take it, our last. I'm break. not sure how. What else? What other? What other explanation well, you're going to get from it's that? Probably. Let me let me read you my translation. Uh, I think it's a better translation. When in doubt, was. change the translation because this one. <laughs> the only way I'm going to get the water, be it the boat and the people being saved through water, is if it. If you're floating, it, if they're put, it's pushing it up. He says here, during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely. Through the water. It's okay. A, it's, it, 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 it's a. It's well, either a, it's way, more, it doesn't matter. In this translation, it's, it's, like, it's like saying if a, if a storm came through West Monroe, Louisiana, mm-hmm. and you guys survived it, uh, you were brought safely through the storm through you the were flood in waters. Well, I like that but, translation. But you're, uh, you're, I, I like that translation better, Zach, yours. But I'm saying the way the NIV translated this, the only way it can. That can be a reality as if it, the water pushed it up. But, I mean, but, so maybe your translation. But the, but the Hebrew writer accurate. was speaking to the opposite group. Y'all are talking about how no one of them were saved because they had a boat and they had a big water. No, I was just but, but I was Hebrews, trying to Hebrews define. Hebrews 11, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, that means water over the entire earth. In holy fear, built an ark, there's a reason. To save his family, and and waters involved, they had a boat, and nobody else was aboard. By his faith, he condemned the world. They were drowned with water. On one side, there's a mighty throng, all of them but seven, water killed them. But in his case, he had a boat because by faith, he said, what I need to do is they need to build a boat. It's a big one. By his faith, he condemned the world. And he became a re- heir of righteousness that comes by faith. That's like b- water baptism. It's by faith. You're saved. Well, right. He says that, Colossians. So let me finish yeah. reading this. In it, only a few people, eight, eight and all, were saved through water. Sorry, we got distracted on that phrase. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Case closed. Now, well, he, he's not saying baptism was the symbol. He said water symbolizes baptism because i guess you go back into that scenario yep that was actual water but, oh but what does he clarify? but what does he okay but what does he clarify what well does he then clarify he clarifies here? which i love this it's not the removal of dirt from the body so it's not a bath that's right so like you said about the lord's supper it's not if it was every there's time nothing he, uh the crackers and the juice they don't have some medicinal aspects to it that's that's like it's not the physical act of washing just like it's not the cracker and the juice that has some kind of magical healing power i get it so it's not the removal of dirt from the body but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. There it is. Well, I think, the and then this part. next phrase, it saves you. Baptism saves you, it, or this act, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, powers, and submission to him. 
Now we're I, back. I finally got it up. Now we're back to Romans six. Just do it. Here's mine. All the listeners out there, y'all go with Jace, <laughs> Al, or, or Zachary, <laughs> or you just say, why don't we just do it? Well, because I think when you get to, I just baptized ten. Hold on, hold on. We're not saying. You said when was those ten people saved saved yesterday? Before, (laughs) on the way down to the river, or were they saved when they were born again of water (laughs) and the Spirit? So I'm thinking because it's the same problem I have with Nike. You know, they came up with a campaign that just said, "Just do it," and I'm like, "Do what? Why? Buy your tennis shoes?" They're like, "Just do it." I I wanted some clarification on it. And I think the reason and understanding that provides motivation, passion, joy. And I want to understand the process. I I mean, Jesus is what saves you. That's the number one clear thing I got out of 1 Peter 3. Because it says. The question. He died for your sins once and for all. is when. And it saves you by the resurrection. When. I, I, I don't think that that's that significant. But. I do. Yeah, I I don't. I, but I'm. I think we're agreeing. I think people should run to the water after they hear, understand Jesus. I do too. But I'm saying it's just as important for us to get out and share Jesus, because that's what causes people to want to run. I don't want to get you know share Jesus and somebody says, "Well, should I be baptized?" I was like, "Well, you know." Here's three or four texts. I mean, I'll just read do them. it. I mean, just it, do it. it, it, it just but, seems, hold on. It, I think it, read them the text. Yeah, but it just seems so. Uh, well, the, it's not the, as here's exciting the, here's, to tell somebody just do it. Now here, I, here's the. I think I think you can answer the question of when. I think the, uh, I would say when you put your faith in Jesus. Uh, I think when you're immersed into Christ, the, the question is: Is water baptism the moment that you are immersed into Christ, or is there I is say water is. baptism? When you believe, yeah, I, I would disagree. Well, I would, say you, that water I would disagree also because you can't take out when someone hears about Jesus. You, you're now you're missing that aspect. That's why you got to preach the gospel. If somebody says just be baptized w- without without that, you have to have the moment that you realize, or or it's getting into your ears, which trickles down to your heart, who Jesus is, what he did, what he's doing. What he will do on a cross well, do you, and a resurrection. Do you, know who the, you, do you know who the moment is not important to? In my opinion, is God, because God is outside of time. And so, when we have these discussions about, like, in God's economy, in God's time, he's, he's not he's non temporal. I mean, so, so it's like that, these are these are the things we discuss as temporal beings about when and all that. But I, I mean, I do think it's more important is to think, man, put your faith in Jesus. Exactly, like, I, would, any, I agree. Any, any anybody that came into our church. And said, "Man, I, I I want to be a follower of Christ, and I would share the gospel with them, and I would tell them that that what that Christ died in place of their sin, that like that he it's his finished work. I, I, you're saved by your faith in him alone. And they're like, "Man, what do I do? I would I would respond just like they responded to the Book of Acts. I'd say, "You need to repent and be baptized." And they, if they said, "When?" I'd say, "Right now, let's go." That's what we would do. Now, if they said, the, the, am I, if I'm, I, when am I saved? I said, when, when you put your faith in Jesus. Well, and and, and, and that, I, that's what I would tell them if they asked me. I don't think that it has to be just because I don't, just because I believe that you're faith, saved that when you put your faith in Jesus doesn't mean that I w- would diminish baptism in any way. Uh, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't uh, tell someone to immediately be baptized. So it kind of becomes, in my mind, a moot point because I've never met anybody that has heard the truth of the gospel and understood their sin before a holy God and, and, and looked up to him and said, man, what I, I, I see my sin. I see his holiness. What do I do? And I would, and if I said, man, you need to repent, and be baptized. And they, I'd never heard anyone that would say, well, I'll do the repentance part, but that baptism, that's just asking. People well, I agree that it's a good point. I think the problem is, is theologians and smarter, more mature people. They're the ones that come in and make it murky to to the ones just the common people out there they're like what an opportunity that's why it just i don't know it makes me feel squeamish when people come in there and they're like well you don't have to do that but you should i i don't know i just i feel uncomfortable with that (laughs) although it's a small issue you're baptized once you live for jesus every day you know he said there's one baptism in ephesians 4 
I mean, it means something. Well, but I don't. But I, I mean, I think he's saying there's like, like he's saying there's not a there's not a baptism into multiple, you know, things, or you're baptized into Christ. And that's it. One faith, one. Well, Lord, that's one what baptism. I'm saying, Zach. But, I, but it but is in the list. It but, I mean, but the that's list. what that would be the argument. Y'all that are would getting be the there argument. slowly but surely. No, I, and I tend I agree with Dad in the sense that I think baptism is the culmination of the process. I do too. That God leads us to salvation. I believe that's when the Holy Spirit's received as well. So I'm in I, I'm in agreement with you on that, Dad, because Jace, you said it earlier, the illustration, which we're almost out of time, so we'll talk about more in the overtime, of, of a wedding is the culmination of a decision for people to spend the rest of their lives together. You can it's all part. They had to make a decision. They were going to do it. Oh, they I, had to, I agree. You know, I, I agree a hundred percent. But my point was you're so, well, how do you agree with that? I agree, but you don't want to diminish the correct. hearing of the gospel and correct. the, whatever you want to call it, the decision of that, the faith that's being attached to it. Cause then you're just trying to baptize people. For right. no reason. Well, in the movie, Zach, it's a, it was a good point because before Bill Smith baptized me, we were we were two hours away from that. We were discussing when, when, so and what. He said, "You know, you need to obey the gospel." I said, "How'd I do that?" I said, he said. Well, you know what the gospel is? And I said, I don't know, gospel music on the radio. I said to him, what do I need to believe? Who do I need to believe in to be saved? Well, he goes through the gospel for two hours before we ever got to water baptism. But I hadn't heard the gospel. So I didn't know that I was reenacting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus by faith. I didn't know that. Let's, hey, con- is that, let's continue yeah, hold, this later. Yeah, hold that thought. Let's uh, let's go to overtime. BlazeTV.com slash unashamed is where you subscribe to get our overtime segment. So we'll see you over there. We'll continue this discussion. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.